Hello, friend. I'm having a conversation here with some of my friends uh, here in this studio. And uh, I'm just uh, talking about God's creativity. <sighs> Number one, God is creative, very creative. Number two, he hardly repeats himself. Hey, Sabina, where are you? Where, what, what town are you in there? Are you in Kenya? If you're in Kenya, just write uh, to me on the screen where you're watching from. Welcome you that are coming on. Share this with your friends. Everybody's going to get blessed. God rarely repeats himself unless it's for emphasis purposes. He's always saying something fresh and new. Even in music, it flows. You know, melody, rhyme, reason, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. It's always a flow of something new. It's not the same song. Da, da, you know, I can't even do it. I'm glad I, I'm glad I can't do it because I don't want to do it. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want to do that. So I, I was talking about some really horrendous music that was going on that just would break your ears, first of all. And I'm still not, I'm still not hearing too well from being in the environment. And then uh, it's just the same thing over and over again, and it's flat dead in the spirit. Someone says, how do you know that? I know because I'm a prom God's prophet. I'm very sensitive in the spirit world. You know, Jesus was so sensitive to do miracles, to even to raise a dead person. He told everyone to get out of the room because everyone had different various opinions. You know what I mean? Different things going on. Different vibes, different demons on them, different agitate. It was agitating him. So he says, yo, get out. Go outside. Leave me here. I have to concentrate. And I just did that. I was about half a world away on the other side of the country. And a, and a famous, very strategic point. And I had one precious lady saying amen every time. Amen. Everything I said, she was saying amen. I was like, oh. I put my hand, she didn't get it. She thought I was lifting my hands to praise the Lord. I was trying to tell her, hold it. And the guy she came with was some idiotic cameraman from the street who's trying to get a hundred shillings for taking a photo. And man, I should have deleted all those pictures. I didn't have time. I was trying to get in the car. The next time I'm gonna grab that camera and do like they did in The Godfather. You know, the guy went out and smashed all the reporters' cameras on the floor. How dare you come here taking pictures of our family at a, at a wedding? We were just trying to spy on them, you know? So I said, no, go over there, down there, and wait for me. I need to concentrate. Because you're very sensitive in the spirit to everything going on when you're anointed. When you're creative, like a psalmist, a minstrel, a prophet, Someone who flows in the supernatural, you pick up on everything. It's a very, very tough situation many times because you can't just leave everything the way it is. You just see everything, everything, everything. But you know what? It's worth it to be anointed. Someone lift your hands. It's worth it. It's worth it to be anointed and, and, and have that problem than to be half dead and not understand when you're spiritually inept of, of understanding anything. God is uh, multifaceted, very brilliant, very creative. So one way you know something's wrong and flat dead of the, uh, and void of the Holy Ghost is when it's the same repetitive thing that you could predict it, you know it. I'm, now, I'm not talking about a song that's anointed and now you're doing it again because it's the time to do this song again because the same anointing will come. You know, when you write a song, you have verse, right? You have verse, chorus, the, the, the what do you call those? Not the music notes, but the, the whole line of a line of a thing. You have the whole rhythm. So you're going to do that again. It's not wrong to repeat that. To have a, a song, but if it's anointed to begin with, now you're in good shape. You can repeat it. But when people just do the same thing again, over and over and over and over and over and over, it's, you know what you're doing? You're singing, you're not worshiping. 
You're dancing, moving back and forth, acting like it's worship, and there's no life of the Spirit on it. And guess what? That will produce nothing for you or anybody. So here, here we, I was talking about a service we did earlier today. Here we have a service. The glory comes, and I had an open vision at the end of my little session. I, I saw the heavens open over the land. I saw angels coming. It was, it was magnanimous the way I saw it. I didn't even describe it as, as, good, as well as I saw it. And then after that, they go back to the program. Da, da, da. Ear breaking, speakers too loud. And there's no anointing. I mean none. I am really regretting that I lasted even a few, mo a few moments. I should have just went earlier. But there's something, I, there's something I wanted in my car, in my vehicle. So uh, my mobile office, you know, it's very comfortable, very well laid out. I, there's something I needed. So that triggered me to go. When I got there, I was like, hey, this is nice. Let me stay here and close the door and have my own environment with God. And can you imagine during church, I was going through my phone and some WWE clips popped up. That's not church stuff, but it's very entertaining. So I watched two of them and I laughed so hard. I was like, oh, this is great. This is so funny. Ha <laughs> ha. I started to feel energized while the church program was going on. You see why people are so messed up? Nod or shake your head or do something. Or go like this. Yala, yala, are you all all right? Hello, are you there? I don't know, I don't think so. It's all right, I'll, let me just go in the closet. I'll just, I'll just look at the phone and the camera and do my own solo. So I'll fly solo, autopilot. Drone, the drone mission. These people saying you can't have a drone. If I want to have a drone, I'll have a drone. If I need to film something from there, I'll do it. Praise God, don't have any drones. Sayeth who? Just thought I'd say that. I'm not advocating that you like go against the uh, ordinance, but you know, you do, it's, your, it's your world. Make it as creative as you want it to be. The Lord's been talking about uh, people having a great life, you know, having your own real estate, having your own vehicles, having your own atmosphere, environment. God wants us to have the best of everything. Lift your hands, lift your hands, and especially him. You know, you know what the Lord had me do? They were having a program where they were honoring the, the, the church and the, the leader and all that. And um, that's good. I said, that's good. Give honor to whom honors do. But you know what? We need to connect with God. It starts with God. Because if his, if his anointing shows up, God had me prophesy that from today, in that place, something new would be released. In the region and in the place and with the people there. Anyway, mission accomplished. I'm not even like 1% one, 1 as excited about that as what I just did in the last few days up and down uh, a certain region of East Africa. It was just phenomenal. Blew it up. Blew it up. Release new dispensate, new outpourings in certain cities that have just dried up. The coast where the, the tourism is trashed. Abandoned properties, everybody out of business, everybody's whacked economically, everybody. Devastation, famine. It's like Bible days famine. And the Lord's saying, He's going to bring the economy to his own people. I don't want to talk about that today, funny enough. So I love to talk about that, but the Lord said to me something else. He wants me to speak about a few things. Anyway, I'm, just going to, I'm not going to announce it. I'm just going to do it. Let me tell you, uh, uh, 
a biblical definition of prophecy. Prophecy in passages of the Bible, but also like by the Holy Ghost. I like this terminology, that's why I'm reading it here. It says, they're communications from God, reflecting communications from God to humans through prophets. <laughs> Biblical prophets have received revelations from God. Do you know this modern Wikipedia and what they say it in a sarcastic way? It says that supposedly reflect. They had to put the word supposedly because they have to be like doubtful. They have to be like a little antichristish, yeah? <laughs> So they put supposedly, like it's alleged that it is. You know, they don't, they don't, they won't say that it is that, but of course we know it is. But isn't that a great way of putting it? Communications from God to humans through prophets. I want to tell you something else. Everything can hear a prophet, even animals. How many know many times I told some stories how I've spoken to animals and they, they obeyed? Wicked animals, like big, ele big bull elephants on the charge is ready to kill you. Stop them in their tracks. 12 foot long crocodiles, that if they got their jaws on you, you're, you're done, you know? Stuff like that. Hurricanes that were coming, we made them dissipate. Tornadoes that were bringing destruction, it coming right in our path. And the Lord had me rebuke the, hurric uh, the tornado. And it just went right up, right in front of my eyes, and disappeared. And it was going to hit the airport in a major city in America and destroy. If that tornado hit the airport, it would be damaged into the billions of dollars, and it would disrupt the entire economy. Could you imagine a major hub airport? Not a little airport in a town where they have some planes coming through. I'm talking about the hub of major airlines. Yeah? And if the tornado came and hit those planes and hit the building, it would be like, it, it would devastate. It'd be, it'd be like, you know, like 9-11. You think they just hit two buildings? No. They took out the whole, that they hit the financial capital there. And those companies that do the big trading and the billions of dollars collapsed and when those buildings collapsed. They didn't just hit two buildings. They hit a nerve center that caused a, a devastation that went all throughout the economy. And the, so if a tornado were to hit the major hub airport, imagine that. And here I am, here I am in a church there, and I heard the sirens and I was like, what's that? Because I'm from New York City. I never heard no tornado sirens. Certain states in America, they have tornado sirens. When those sirens, speaker systems wired through the whole land, and they're every few miles and they're really loud, you know, a loud megaphone type thing. And you hear that woo sound. It's like, it's over, man. Run for your life. You know, put your head in the brace position and kiss your butt goodbye. Hello. See if you can reach far enough and kiss your rear end goodbye because it's over. Praise the Lord. You know, like they tell you, like, if the plane's going to go, put your head in the in the brace position, I'm like, wow, what does it mean? You know, are you praying or are you just trying to keep yourself from flying through the air? If, so, if you hit something and then everybody goes flying, you're bouncing off the ceiling, you know, I mean, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to be too, I've been trying to paint any picture of that. I just say it'll never happen in Jesus' name in my lifetime. You know, people that have been killed in wrecks, car accidents, trains, planes, automobiles, it's never going to happen to me. How about you? I speak over you too. It's never going to happen to you. I, I can't speak for everyone in the world. I have a lady who's a precious lady. She just came to meet us because she's doing some business with another, another friend, another partner, and uh, she was speaking so many negative things. I, she really has to be in a training class with me. At first I got so annoyed, I'm like, oh, this woman. But then I thought about it afterwards. I thought, you know, she just needs a good teacher. She needs a mentor. She needs a good pastor. She don't have one. Because you can't have a good pastor, praise the Lord, Amen. a good spiritual authority, I mean, who teaches, not that just shouts and makes noise, someone that 
teaches things to you how to operate in life, how to operate biblically, how to operate by faith. You, you can't have somebody like that and talk all that nonsense. I saw a thing on the wall. We were driving in the car. I said, stop. They were like, they can't stop because they're in the road. Imagine. I thought, we're in the road. Uh, uh-huh. It's better than being in the ditch because on the side of the road around here, if you go a little bit too far, you could end up, you could end up in hell or in Tanzania, or what's south of here, Somalia. Maybe there's a tunnel if you go down, you know, you just end up somewhere in another country down south. How about Embagathi Way, Jinga Highway? Praise the Lord. Amen. You don't know that one? You people are really something else. That's okay, I know it. Yeah, you know it, yeah. So what happens if you go off a little bit three centimeters to the side too much. <whistles> Over and out. Have a nice weekend. Gioni Jema. Maybe see you on the other side, you know? And somebody built that and they called it a highway? Ooh, Lord Jesus. Anyway, anyway, let me, let me not, let me not. Let me not stop on that one. So they said they couldn't stop because they're in the road. I thought, uh-huh, yes, you can. Back up, please. Well, the so-and-sos might get them, the blue shirts, you know? Where are they? So I shouted. I said, do you know who I am? I'll sort that out. Just follow they looked like they were like, they couldn't do this, they couldn't do that. that it, who put all this on you? You're living in a box. Hello. All rules are not meant to be followed. Because the law of dominion operates where you can, you're supposed to enjoy your life and do what you want to do. You see all these rules and regulations, all these mentalities, why you can't do something because someone told you that but did God say that you can't live a good life unless you get out of the box lift your hands somebody lift your hands somebody lift your hands buddy somebody and just see yourself like jumping out of everything that's holding you back keeping you stuck I don't you know I don't have the energy like to, to go to everybody I wish I could go to everybody's house and just slap some things around and chase some devils out. But I, of course, I can't possibly do that. But the spirit is willing, but the flesh, you know, and the time frames and all that, I don't know how much energy I have to do all that. But people have to listen to instruction. Here's another one. Uh, come get my luggage. They get to the door and they stand there and look at you. I thought, uh, well, okay, okay. So you want me to take this? No. Just wait till next week. I'll just stand here. Praise the Lord. Amen. And one guy takes the, he takes the, I'm, I'm talking about the experience of the last two days, okay? Two days. Today and yet, no, one day. Today, <laughs> today is today, one day. Today and yesterday. I'm telling you some stories from the last, <laughs> less than 24, yeah, 24 hours, yeah, about, approximately. Takes one bag, starts to wheel it, leaves the other one sitting there. And he's almost like gone. I told the other guy, the driver, I said, hey. Oh, God, please, I don't want to get annoyed. Oh, God help me. God help them. I'm okay, because I understand, but they don't. So what are you doing? You run away with one bag. What? So I told the, ge I, with the general manager, my friend, he's the general manager of the place. I said, uh, did, them, did their mother drop them on their head when they were young? And they have yet to recover. Is everything okay inside the coconut shell? Is the coconut milk flowing and the brains? 
Is the nerve system working? Is the thought? I thought, are these, and then I said, are these people really human? <laughs> I had to abuse myself, you know. Are these people really human? What? My sister there, bless you. Is that Sophia? I love you, dear. I love you. Thank you for all your, I knew it was you. Stay with me a minute. It's going to get better. It, may get, it might get worse for a minute before it gets better, but it's going to get good. And I'll pray for everybody here. Don't worry. Give me a few minutes. We won't be long. I want to pray. I feel the anointing. For, lift your hands. Praise God. I feel the anointing. I want to prophesy. I want to bless everybody. I really do. I really, really do. Oh, God, help us. Whew. Wow. So do you see how far these things are, what I'm talking about? And then, and then look at the, how people get away with stealing things. The corruption and the connivery and the, but they're falling sick. They're falling into judgment. I'm back. Someone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll be back. I said that when I was leaving, I think, but I didn't say it. But now I'm, I'm back. <laughs> so these people in Kenya, these guys will say, so you have come. No, I'm not here. Well, you must be imagining things. Like, here I am, and they say, so you have come. I'm like, ah. I know, I know it's a figure of speech, uh, but my God, think about it, man. Yep, you see me? I'm right here. Yes, I have come. Yes, I have come. Take this bag. You want me to take that bag? Oh, let me... See how many times I can say this. Yes. And then they'll ask you something else, you know. Can I have a tropical juice? I really like it. Do you want the tropical juice? <laughs> uh, no, I was, just, I was just kidding around, you know. I really don't want it. Who did this to people? God's not, you know, God is like this. But when you, and you know what? He, here's my emphasis the last few days. And this is what I talked about this morning. They were having a big day. They're still there now. By the way, they're still there. They're having food. They're having other churches come from other places. They're launching a book, having a whole big pastor's appreciation day, this whole thing. I had to leave as I have another meeting. I left my, I left my, uh, um, one of my dear uh, friends there, he thought he should stick, stick around there and just kind of represent us, you know. I said, that's really wisdom. Thank you to do that. I got to go. But all that stuff was going on, and here's what I did. I just took everybody right back to God. I said, let's not try to talk about man, even for a second, before we get a new anointing flowing upon us. Because when that happens, my God, I feel it here. When that happens, everything begins to work. You know what everybody's problem is? It's only one thing. Well, it's a few things, but let me, get, let me tell you two things. Number one, a lack of the anointing. A lack of the Holy Spirit's presence. Number two, a lack of, you know, let's combine them together. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let me make that like one point. So I don't want to make it four points, though I, I should. But let me just say two things. Lack of the presence of God, because where he is, there's liberty and liberation and all kinds of new things happening. And then put these three together. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You don't know. You don't know how to uh, applicate, you know, apply a principle somewhere. And you don't have understanding about the situation, how it all flows. Let me just put those three, the three ingredients as one. Three in one sauce. <laughs> three in one spice. Mix the three together and make a, a new spice. So those are the, those are the, two, cat those are the two things that will just absolutely take your life and catapult you to another, another dimension of living. How many are ready for that? Now, I'm, tell, 
I'm teaching you here. I'm not saying that you, you know, that, oh, well, uh, I have to pray for you. Of course I'm going to pray for you. And you need to tap the grace. And there's another thing I've, I've been talking about. God's speaking about the biblical economic system. You need to tithe in the right place. You need to sow into the right soil because it attracts God to give you a harvest. Now, the Lord spoke to me to talk about these couple of things, a bit, some things about prophecy and the things about the prophetic and some examples, and I'll do that in a minute. I want to give a testimony, and I'm not going to wait to the end. I'll do it now because it's kind of flowing like this. So I'm getting it right now. Precious partner of the ministry uh, told me something. They said well, they have this product for sale, products for sale, and they said whenever they bring them, they never get paid up front. No, and then they have to chase them for the money, and they're almost losing their mind when people try to trick them and don't pay and all that. You know, one of my uh, friends in the hotel industry told me that the government, some local governments, I won't say exactly where, over there, about 500 kilometers that way. You guess, are you guessing where it is yet? And they booked, the, they booked the facilities to have a conference and purposely don't pay. And then they say, okay, we can't do this anymore. So they call again to book it again, and the, the, recept the, recep the managers will say, like, uh, you have to pay up front for us to give you the room. You know what they do? You think they'd go, oh, yeah, sorry, okay. No, they hang up the phone and they don't come. And they go find another place where they can play that same trick on them. Guess where these people are going to end up? Not in heaven. Praise the Lord. Some of them are in the hospital now. They're under uh, corruption charges. All kinds of things are happening. And it's just the beginning. I'm back. So this person said, they never get paid. Then they have to go find the money. Now they said, we got a very big harvest. Hundreds and hundreds of kgs of, I don't know, thousands, some kgs of stuff. All kinds of different fruits and vegetables, yeah? Mostly vegetables, I think. And they wrote me yesterday, and this is what they said. I have it in my phone, I can show you. They said, Prophet, I'm so excited. At 6 a.m., I went to this, new, this market and uh, I told them, I, t I told them, I said, God's going to open new markets for you, new places. I don't know if they went to a new one. I have to ask them if it was a new one or, or the same one they were using before. And they said, I sold everything 100% that they gave me all the cash on the spot. 100%. Somebody might say, well, isn't that, that's not a miracle. It's supposed to be like that. No, it's a miracle here. They said it's never happened before. I thought, it's just the beginning. I told you. I said, just watch. Now, here's what happened with this person. Here's, I got to tell you a principle. Here's what happened with this person. They decided to honor me. God, you understand? God moving through me. I'm his servant. You understand that? Honor me. Take care of stuff. Buy plane tickets. Hotel resorts. Take care of food. Take care of everything. Everything, everything. Beautiful. Drivers, transportation, everything. And the next time they're going to the market, while I was still in that place, before I had even left town, this miracle happened at 6 in the morning. They wrote me, I think, about 8 o'clock, shocked. I got the message, I was, I just popped up, you know, I'm real quick, I'm always on the phone, quick, quick, boom, boom, I was like, oh, I, here's what I wrote, I told you, and I said, then I wrote, it's just the beginning, yeah. lift your hands, now this person has, is creating and tapping into a new grace for economy because of, of what they're doing, I'll tell you another one, great partner, Great partner. Oh, I can't say enough. And if I told you the details, some of you'd gnash your teeth and fall down and have a fit. We'd have to restrain you or cast something out of you. I don't know what we'd have to do. I think if I told you the details, what some people do for God's profit. Oh, Lord, I give you praise. And it's the Lord that leads them to do it. 
And sometimes they even get, catch themselves at the middle of it all and go, oh, what am I doing? I'm like, ah, oh, it's okay, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, free flow. The boss is touching you to do it. I can't tell the details. You might, you might have the jaw drop, you know, down to here. Your jaw might be over here. <laughs> and then we have to get someone to kind of gently, you know, put it back into place. So I won't tell the details. But their brother had a need, and the other brother had a need, and the mother had a need, and they had a need, and this one had a need. Guess what? Before I even prayed, all the miracles had happened. Every one of them was healed. I have the emails, I have the testimonies, I have the WhatsApp, I have, they wrote, they wrote back and said, thank you for praying, and I'm thinking, did I pray that hard? I might have said, be blessed, you know, yeah, thank you, Lord. And they tell you, go, I just go, uh-huh, I nod my head, uh-huh, yeah. And then next thing you know, we get the report back, they're here, why? Because this person is standing in the gap and they're doing so much, they're tapping the grace directly, they're connecting with God. And this is what people miss all the time. They don't understand the principle. You can't outgive God. Whenever you give, you're, you're doing a transaction with him. Amen. You're doing business with God, and he'll begin to bless. I have some friends that are multimillionaires. Uh, U.S. dollar multimillionaires. Some friends I have are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And that's tens of billions in your currency. Multi, 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 more than 10, 20, and 30 times, billion, multi-billionaires. And then you look at their life. And then you look at what they've been doing. And you go, oh, I'm figuring it out. They're working the laws of God. Some are getting the creativity in business. Some are, of course, they're working the biblical economic system of tithing. They're tithing. They have a spiritual father. They have a connection with heaven. Yes. I heard some, there was a man preaching in this event today, and he's shouting. It was really loud. The speakers were kind of loud. I was going to move again, but the Lord had kept me glued in my seat because I, I was listening to the guy. I was getting a few good points from what he was saying. And I'm really glad I, I wasn't there for the noise, but I came back in when the message was. I kind of heard it, it change, and I heard somebody speaking for a while, so I said, ah. Uh. And then some kid, funny kid, he comes up. He says, you're not going to believe some people here. There's, and I was almost crying, I was laughing. These people are beautiful, but they don't know, but they don't have a clue, you know? You know people that are beautiful, you look at them, you just love them, but they don't have a clue. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have a clue to the puzzle. They don't have a key to the door. They don't. He comes up to the window and he walks around this way, kind of looks through and everything's tinted, he can't see. And he puts his nose right up to the glass, you know, like street kids do here. They put their nose right on the glass and then they, they stand there like this, and you want to just like, oh, help me, Jesus, keep my sanity here. And you really can't talk to these people. They don't listen. They don't listen. You, know, you can shout at them, what are you doing? They, they come at you more. They're, they're, they're crazy. They're crazy. They're not okay. This kid was funny. He comes around, looks this way, this way, this way. Finally, he decides to knock on the, He went away. I didn't know what he was doing. I didn't know who he was. That was a while back, and then he came again like 15 minutes later, and I'm still sitting there and drinking my coffee and praying, enjoying myself by myself in my vehicle while all the noise is going on everywhere. And then he comes again. Finally, this time, imagine, he should have knocked the first time, but he didn't, so he knocks on the window, so I open the window. I said, yes. <laughs> he said, um, the apostle in there asked me to come here and to knock on the window and he said, the one that you see inside, he, he should come inside, come here. And he said, are you there, are you going to take photos? <laughs> I was laughing. He started asking, are 
you taking photos? I looked at him like, I shook my head like Jesus in heaven. Okay, he doesn't have a clue. He doesn't know. Just leave him like that. I said, bless you, son. I'll be right in. Go ahead. Are you taking photos? <laughs> I just preached in the I just preached in the morning service. He doesn't even know who I am. That's funny. Lord have mercy. So this guy was shouting. I was what I was talking about. Well, he came to get me because really it was a good reminder because I want I needed to go in because God wanted me to go in and hear this other speaker. So. He's shouting, where are the spiritual fathers? I know the frustration. And you know, it just rose up in me because I've been, I've been hearing the Lord speak to me the last few days, especially being far away from the craziness of the capital city here. Just really listen to God. Sit by the beach with the wind blowing in, the palm trees rustling, you know. And you just listen to God talk, you know, it's wonderful. A little bit hot though. I like the coldness of, I'm back to the cold place. With less humidity, it's, it's nice. The humidity there is brutal, you know, it's a bit hot. But here it's nice and cool up in the mountain, you know what I mean? No humidity, you know what I'm talking about? So I, I started to feel the Lord talk to me about this and he shouted, where are the spiritual fathers? I'm like, I'm right here, I'm one. Lift your hands. I'm one. I'm on the assignment. I'm on the mission. We're going to do it. Multiply millions of people's lives being changed through our ministry. You know that? Yes. And it's going to get better and better. It's going to get more and more. And I want to I want to write some notes uh, on this. I, I just so many things I want to write notes on. I just uh, I just haven't had the time, but I'm I'm really going to have to make time and just get in the grind of of writing again. And uh, about the the subject of how to bless your leader, how to connect with your leader. And that is also part of what I'm saying now. So I'm not even going all the way into that. You know, you should bring the leader something. He's, he's telling testimonies of how God told him to sell his car, not touch a coin, and bring all the whole thing to the church, to the pastor. That's a good thing. I'm not talking about that right now. You, you hear that? I'm not, I'm, not go I'm not going there right now. I don't need to. I don't need to. I, I mean, we will, but other people will speak about these things. You know what I mean? Other people will do that. I'll just sit back as Papa, and you can just bring me all your gifts, fine. I don't have to conjure that up and work that out. No. no, 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 no. I'm telling you, you can get blessed by connecting with the anointing. You can have nothing, you'll have everything. You can have no car paid for, you can have no car at all, you'll have a car. Lift your hands. You can have a, a little house that you live in now, you can have a big, beautiful place. I have people here in this country, in this city, and all over the world that have connected with the grace that God's put upon us and the mantle of financial breakthrough, economic empowerment, and increase, and, and they're just flourishing in new things. When, they, 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 when, when I met them, they had nothing. They had absolutely nothing. I was telling one of our guys, I wrote a very strong message to him, and I said, uh, hey, uh, the opportunity of this thing is going to take you far, but I don't know other people how, they're, how far they're taking you. It's a time people also to do some real, some real research in their life and say, well, I'm a part of this, but am I getting blessed? If you're part of the anointing, lift your hands, here it is again. If you're part of the power of God moving, you're going to get blessed. I mean, something's going to happen tangibly for you. Amen. Like this lady, before I left the city, her and her husband, they went to the mark six in the morning with all of their harvest from a big shamba, a big farm. And that was it. Sold straight up. Cash money.
And the Lord said it's just the beginning. Amen. Let's pray right now. I just want us to pray right now. Kabra shela katohosha. The things that you want, the things that you desire, the Lord says they're little or almost nothing compared to what I'm going to give you, my precious sons, my precious daughters. You, could, you haven't seen what I'm about to do. And this is not just something from a preacher, you know, making an empty promise. This is a prophetic word. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. And I... And I'm going to see it, and I'm going to rejoice, and I'm going to have tears in my eyes looking at how blessed you become. Somebody today who had nothing when they came to work for us, nothing at all, they didn't even have a thousand shilling notes, which is, you know, and today they're running company in the multi-millions. They're running three and four companies with a shop and other enterprises. And a bit, half of a company was given to them by someone that owned it that's overseas that couldn't be here all the time and found out that they're trustworthy. And this is the person that was trustworthy with me. They didn't rip me off. They didn't betray me. They didn't try to fool around with... Uh, I, I, you better listen to this. Because I'm going to make it whether you make it or not. I've already made it. I'm, I'm on the other side. I've, I'm, I've, I've passed through the, <laughs> through the tunnel. I'm already there. With or without you or with or without what? It's, it's your opportunity to connect with the grace. And God will take you far. Amen. Mess with it. Play with it. It'll play with you. It's just like that. You know, God is like a mirror. Remember he said to the pure, I'll show myself pure. But to the froward, I'll show myself froward. In other words, he'll mirror I used, to, I used to teach on this a lot, and I haven't said this in years now, but it's just coming back to me like that. Wow, I'm amazed. I remember quoting this verse quite, a, quite often some years ago. To the pure, I'll sh in other words, he'll mirror to you what you are. Remember there's also a place where he said he let, the, he let these particular prophets who wanted to say the wrong thing, he put like a, a people that wanted to hear a wrong thing. They wanted to hear something that God wasn't going to say. So God let these people lie to them so that they could hear what they wanted, but it brought leanness to their soul and it brought devastation in the land. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine those people that spoke something that wasn't right and God arranged it that way so that because the people wanted to hear a certain thing? They must have been shocked. That, that, was a, that was a repentance service right there. That was a repentance time right there for those people. Imagine when they came to find out later that God wasn't saying that at all. Remember the one, too, in the, I think it's in the Kings. He said, shall I, shall I say peace, peace? And the prophet, uh, the king wants to hear it's peace. And the prophet said, no, it's a sword. And they would, they would have tried to kill him for that. Remember Jeremiah, they threw him. You know, Jeremiah was thrown in the dungeon. So was Paul. So was Joseph, right? So was Daniel. Hello? With the lions. And then he got the anointing came on him to make the lions go to sleep. They probably all laid down together. You know that, that nice hair the lions have? I bet you Daniel was probably like running his fingers through it and making himself a pillow. Because God, the, the, the anointing knocked out the lions. They couldn't eat him. But those evil people wanted it. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrew boys. They threw them in the fire, made it seven times hotter than they had made it for other people, and they wouldn't burn. John, the apostle John, they put him in oil, boiling oil. He wouldn't burn. His skin wouldn't. God just put something over his skin. I, I heard the, a testimony of a guy that uh, he said ISIS... A Christian guy, an old man. ISIS tried to burn him like three times, burn him alive. He wouldn't burn. Lift your hands. His skin is even though he his skin wouldn't even burn from the fire. And he came right out of it like, like the way he went in. Those guys must have got scared. And then our president. Then our president uh, has sent the military in to absolutely the last two years. And ISIS is now, but the media can't tell you that. 
is a block on the media. You can't leak war secrets of what's going on. You won't hear of all what happened. Except President Trump came out to say that the chief guy, the wicked one, the one, the mastermind of it all is now dead. He said he died like whimpering and crying and shouting like a fool, like a coward. And then they just wasted him. The Navy SEALs or whatever they are, these special military oper operatives that are fierce, highly trained, highly skilled. You, you can't be, uh, you can't be wicked. You can't be wicked and get away with it. I want to pray right now for the blessing to come on your house. Just lift your hands for because because of your stance of righteousness. I wanted to talk a lot about what's happening in Kenya prophetically, and I may for a minute or two, but I just feel uh, maybe this is a little bit of a, uh, 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 an introduction to this, but I want to, uh, prophecy is, is God communicating with people what's on his mind. Prophecy is God thinking out loud, telling you what's on his mind. And God is very creative and very brilliant. I want to pray that God will bless your house. Lift your hands, everybody. Your house will not be a house of devils. Your house will not be a place where the enemy feels in any way comfortable to be there. In fact, he'll flee every possible way. The Bible talks about comes one way, flees seven ways. Even more than that, they'll run as in terror because of the, pre the presence of the Lord. I'm going to keep talking about this for a while. I'm going to be on this because this is, this is where it's at. You need to be anointed. I'm praying for all my staff, all my people, all my friends, all my networks of, of people to become more anointed. The power of God to be upon you. Come on. The Holy Ghost to be upon you because that's what causes the miraculous to flow. That's what causes change to happen. That's what causes economic increase to come. That's what causes curses to be broken. Operations of sin and witchcraft and evil cultural things and rituals and all kinds of thievery and connery and wickedness brings curses. Proverbs says the curse causes doesn't come. The blessing causes doesn't come either. Comes with, comes with a purpose, comes for a reason, comes because comes you did something. We need to connect with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm praying right now. Let's connect together. Father, in Jesus' name. Woo, I thank you. It's like coming. See, like, like, a, like a ball of fire just fell. It's like behind me and it's just coming right through me. Right now. Right now, receive it. There it is. Touch with your fire, Lord. Everybody here and everybody watching from wherever they are. In Jesus' name. It's being released upon you right now. It's going to feel like fire. It's going to feel like a, like, a, like a wind that just came in. Blew across your life. And all the trash that's been going on in your world is coming to an end. Every curse that caused you to like get close to a blessing and then it doesn't happen and su your, your success patterns like don't flow right, your, 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 you know, things don't work out, there's always a problem, there's always something else, like it doesn't, seems like nothing could go totally right. That day is over. And then being in places like where there's just like a system of the church, ritual, religion, and you just get nowhere. It's like, you sp it's like your wheels are spinning, but you don't, you, you don't go, you don't travel anywhere. That day is over. That day is ending. You're in the right place at the right time, listening to the right one. God has sent me. And I don't want to talk about myself. I don't want to ever get in that thing about, you know, 
You don't have to talk about yourself or put yourself. God is the one that ordains. Yes. God is the one who anoints a vessel. God is the one, one who calls and ordains his own servants. Come on. His own prophet, his own prophets, his own pastors, his own leaders. He's the one that does that. And the anointing is tangible. It's evident. You know, it's, it's, it's quantifiable. You can feel it. You can taste it. There's a flavor, a fragrance, a an essence of the presence, and then, and then things begin to happen. Blessings begin to flow. Amen. It's unmistakable. And that's missing so many places. So this is, what I, this is really what I feel in my spirit, is really what's on my heart from the Lord, to tell you the missing ingredient is the presence of the Lord. And the missing realm of operation is those three things put together in one category, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Understanding is, is amazing. I mean, can you imagine when you have understanding, you just know how everything is, you can see it, you understand, you understand. You just, it's like the communication realm of, of, of what everything is and how it is and what, what you need to know about every situation. You just understand. It's, it's a very, very powerful move of the Holy Spirit. Knowledge. Oh, my God, to have knowledge. Through, through knowledge, the just will be delivered, Hosea 4, 6. Lack of knowledge, people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge, people are destroyed but through knowledge that just will be delivered. The two verses of scripture says that. The spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, and the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of counsel. Counsel can also come through other people. You don't know everything yourself, you need to learn. That's why we need to always be humbling ourselves, asking questions, you know, getting more knowledgeable. That's why I'm always reading, you know, I could read a lot more than I do, but I, I should. But every great leader reads a lot. You know Warren Buffett, he's one of the richest men in the world. He reads like eight hours a day. He, he, he's always studying and reading, and he makes billions of dollars doing it. Can you imagine how foolish that sounds? I'm a learner. I'm a, what do you do for a living? I'm a learner. I'm a reader. People look at you like you lost your mind. They say, that's not a job. Hello, that's not a company. What do you do? Who do you work for? Are you self-employed or you work for a company? I'm a learner. I'm a reader. I'm a researcher. Ah, they can almost get that because, oh, you mean it's R&D, the Department of Research and Development of a company, you know, you're doing research so that they can do a project. No, I'm learning about the laws of success, I'm learning about life, how, how it operates. I'm learning from great men and women that have done great things. I was filming a, broad, broad, a few broadcasts in this mall under three palm trees. Some of you have seen that place on my, on my live broadcast, um, like last year, uh, or very early this year, earlier this year. and. Uh, there's a shop there called uh, Spanx, S-P-A-N-X. I don't know what it means, but that's the name of the comp that's the name of the shop. And those shops and stores are all over the world. And this lady, a uh, blonde haired white lady named Sarah Blakely, she's, she, listen to me, listen to me now, you're not ready for this. She's a billionaire today, a billionaire, USD baby billionaire with a B. She's, she's more than $1,000 million rich from this thing that she created. She said it started with a need that she had. She said, these are her words, I don't have this problem. I guess it's a woman thing. She said, I wanted to wear white pants and I didn't want anything to show, whatever that means. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Hello. Goodbye. Hi. Jambo Quaheri. You know? Yeah, whatever. She wanted to wear something to create something that would 
block the viewership, okay? You get it? I thought, boy, if you told someone about that, they'd really think you're crazy. Huh? Well, help yourself, lady. Okay, blondie. Hoo-hoo, you know what they say about blonde, right? The blonde jokes. Can I tell you one blonde joke? Can I? I mean, looking at me like, these two blondies from LA were on a flight, and here comes the captain. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our engines just gone out. And the one looks at the other and says, oh no. And they go back to, ha, ha, you know, airheads, right? They, they say you can look in one ear and see what's on the, you can see right through, you know, that's another. Blonde jokes. So then the captain comes on. I think there's three, three engines on this jet, yeah? So the captain comes on again and says, ladies and gentlemen, we have some very bad news. Uh, another engine has gone out. And one goes to the other and goes, oh! And she slaps the other lady, the, you know, slaps her girlfriend and says, gee, if another engine goes out, we'll be up here all day. We'll never get there. <laughs> it is like the loss of an engine is just slowing them down. You get it? She doesn't think that it's going to cause, you know. There's this blonde woman. I love talking about it because some of you, 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 you haven't done anything with any ideas you have. She said, she said, everybody's had a million dollar idea, but they just haven't done anything about it. Lift your hands. I pray for those million dollar ideas. I pray for that creative wisdom to flow in your life that you can do something with it. Now here's what you need. You need the, you need the brilliance of a plan to take it into fruition. Let's pray, let's pray together, I wanna to pray. Now I have to say something too while I'm about to pray here. This lady, it, it really doesn't matter what anybody thinks about her idea. She's already, she's already done it and executed it and has shops all over the world. And she's a billionaire now. You know what a billion can buy you? Anything you want and more any kind of property, any kind of anything. And she just had an idea with a need that she had and nobody could get, nobody could give her. She wasn't asking for what she wanted. Nobody could help her. So she designed it herself. And the need became a business enterprise. And it didn't just solve a problem for her, it became a solution for women all over the world. And they all go to buy stuff there. What a story, yeah? So if one woman could do that, could you do it? Are you glad I'm talking like this? The church is all over the area, nobody said anything like this today, right? They just shouted about how God may, might give you a miracle. He might, he might not, you don't know. And whatever. I think that's a waste of time. You go deaf, you go, I mean, you, you get your hearing damaged, you, you, you could leave with a headache, and you go, what did I come here for? Did I get anything out of this? No. The presence of the Lord will come with creativity to just paint a new world for you. Lift your hands. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to close in a minute. I'm done. I'm just, I'm just saying the point over in different ways because I want it to soak into you. I saw like a fireball in the spirit. I have, had two open visions to that. So one, a portal in heaven, if you want to call it that, or a gate, a gate, a gate in heaven open and just angels by the thousands come from way up high, higher than any mountain, way up in the heavenlies and begin to come down. Such great things are going to happen on the earth. Amen. Such great things are going to happen in this land. Amen. And in this marketplace we were, one gay gate, one gay gay market area. I've been there twice now, and the Lord's had me prophesy, and then I had the open vision there. There's something going to happen in that area. There's something that's going to happen in that region. Something. 
And, and every way you look over there, my prophecy is being fulfilled to what the Lord spoke to me about road development. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. There, there are new roads coming everywhere over there. New ones, beautiful. I mean, you can drive and don't feel one, one pothole, one bump, one shake. They're there. It wasn't like that just a few years ago. It's getting better and better. Dual roads. And places where they need to make dual roads, they will. Like the coastline where they have this long, treacherous highway with one lane. And they, you look to either side, there's room to expand it. They will do it. When you get near the airport over there, it's really horrendous. But it's because they're building that thing. And, and you know, no matter how much money these guys want to steal and how much they want to stop the progress, they can't because God's behind the progress and God's against them. And you're going to begin to see, I'm prophesying, you're going to begin to see the judgment of God come visibly and tangibly upon these government people that have been stealing money. You're going to see sudden deaths, death, death, death come upon them. You're going to see them in all kinds of problems and troubles. It's like, 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 a, like an avalanche of adversity and calamity is falling upon them. I'm prophesying because God is tired of seeing people suffer. And then you're going to begin to see people become more creative. That's going to be like the, the building of a new high society here. And I've been prophesying that for a long time. You know, I said that many years ago. A very elite circle, even in the realm of Christianity, even the realm of real believers, God's going to begin to raise up people to become absolutely brilliant and brilliantly blessed. And some people that had things going, and it seemed like there was an onslaught of hell to stop, to try to stop what it is they're supposed to accomplish. But the Lord is saying he's sending another wave of glory again. He's reactivating them again. And what they seem to have missed and lost, it's coming again, but even with greater weight and greater glory. You, you, when you partner, when you connect with the Holy Spirit, with his anointed and his anointing, I've been speaking about this, you cannot lose. You can only win. Yes. And God's going to give such a creative flow for business people. Let's keep praying. Such a creative, brilliant flow. You'll, the Lord will give you ideas that he's given to nobody else. And an idea we know can become an instruction. A couple of towns, Chuka town, Chuka, C-H-U-K-A. I went there, prophesied, the whole place is redone now. They want me to come back and see the new city. And then these cities, Kansas City, the technological city, and Tattoo City over here, outside of Nairobi, being done. They're, being, they're coming forth. And all these new road, uh, new highways going through everywhere. It's absolutely amazing what's happening. New skyscrapers being built, new buildings. The whole landscape of the, of the cities are being transformed. And little towns that just had a little bit of traffic, messed up roads, backward. The Lord's going to make them business commerce centers and have roads paved through there, and it's going to become a completely different environment and place. It's already happening. It's already happening. That's our God. Now, he doesn't just want to do it in a city that everybody, good and evil, all can enjoy it. He wants the righteous people to enjoy the best of everything first. Amen. God's not trying to bless the wicked. He really can't bless the wicked. They, they devise things for themselves. God causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Why? So that the just can survive and live. Amen. He's not doing it. It's not a verse that says he's blessing the wicked. There's nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible. I, I give you a challenge. Try to find a verse somewhere, except for him to say you're going to be saved, you're going to give what you have over to the good people, you're going to lose, or you're going to be broken, 
and you, and you can repent. You know, all the, that, that can be there because God wants all people to turn around and come to him, though, even the wicked. But there's nowhere, there's nowhere that I've ever seen in the word of God where God says, I'm going to bless the wicked. No, the wicked receive curses, not blessings. So if you're the righteous that is supposed to be being blessed, where, where's the proof of that? But I'm seeing people that are going to even work with the downturn of the economy and go scoop up properties in the time when it's down and wait for it to come back up. Because it's going to come back up. I see whole new developments, even on the waterfront on the coast. I see like a whole new facade of new shops, new malls, new marinas, new, ah, it's almost like a little city within a, within a region. There's a, they're going to begin to come up and come back. People are going to build them. And the devastation of the downturn of the tourism industry is going to come back around again. And there are people that are going to profit by the loss of others. And the Lord says again, I'm not, gonna, I'm not blessing the wicked. I want to bless my own people. Amen. So the economy that the Lord's been speaking about, the new economy, the new flows of blessing, the Lord is going to cause that to come to his own elect. Lift your hands. You're his elect. Amen. And you need to be getting blessed. And stop looking at idol worshipers. Heathens, drunkards, adulterers, filthy people, false religion entities, idol worshipers. And you think, you think they're better than you. They're no better than you. They're like, Jesus even called someone a dog. He said, it's not right to give the children's bread to dogs. And the lady said, well said, sir. But even the dogs can sit under the table and get some of the crumbs. Can I have some crumbs, please? She didn't get offended and go, huh, how can he talk to me like that? She humbled herself and said, yeah, it, it, we know it's for the children of Israel, and I'm an outsider, but can I come in and get blessed too? And the Lord answered her request, which tells you a brilliant thing about the Lord. Anybody can turn around and come into it. Doesn't matter how bad you've been, what you've been doing, what you've been involved in, if you'll turn around and come and, and move toward the Lord, he'll take you in with open hands, open arms. That's what's, that's what's great. But most people don't do that. They're on their own agenda trying to take over. And I tell you, the Lord's not in it. The devil's in it. And they're no better than you. Even a person who could sit with nothing I have to say this, can sit with nothing, but just with the presence of God, and they don't really have anything. And then they think of someone that has a big house in the city, come on, big property, big cars, nice clothes, flashy life, and they could, and, and how, dare would, how dare they think that that person's better than them? Those people are not better than them. They also have the same kind of problems, they have the same kind of issues. Some people are rich, but their children are on drugs. Some people are rich, but they have, they're dying of cancer. Hello. Yeah. And some of them have. Some people uh, you know, look to have everything, but they're messed up. But they're no better than you. Lift your hands. I want to I release this fire. I saw like a ball of fire falling and then going out. Whew. Receive it, and I'm done. I'll come back to you on the next broadcast. I want to uh, say that you need to be a tither, you need to be a giver, you need to be a seed sower. And all you that have been doing that, I commend you in Jesus' name. I'm going to be having some new books coming out, some new teachings coming out, some special uh, private partners events, and maybe like a high tea, stuff like that, dinner somewhere, whatever. We're going to do that. We're going to do that, and you'll be, you'll be there with us. And... Uh, and then people need to also sow. You need to be sowing. And then the principle of first fruits, when you get a new business thing or maybe a new job, could you imagine someone would take the first salary they get and bring it as an offering to the Lord? To do what? To open up the windows of heaven on the whole thing, on the rest of it. And that's very rarely talked about. 
because it seems like an almost impossible thing to do. We have a couple of people here that have done that, and I remember. You watch. God has, God watched, he took note of that, he received it, and he's releasing fire upon your life of blessing. It's coming. You can't do something that big and that great and not get severely blessed. Fiercely blessed, wonderfully blessed, magnanimously blessed. And you know, and I'm reminded of these people as I was telling you about these partners. One flew to a city in Europe where I was speaking in conferences and bought me all kinds of things, bought computers for the ministry, took me shopping, bought me all kinds of beautiful things. There's a long list, I won't go tell the whole list. And he went back home and he called me some weeks, months, a couple of months later, weeks later, I can't remember now, it was, a long, it was quite a while ago. And he uh, was also in a service where the church received the largest offering in the history of their ministry, 21 years there at church. And this is, the, this is an apostle, an apostle in Europe who's known, has had a lot of known speakers in, the, in their country and he hosted them. Big name people. He's not a small guy. And when I spoke that, that uh, few days in their Bible school and did the Sunday services, the evening services, he said that Sunday morning, the largest offering in the history of their ministry came in. Several hundred thousand. One service. The glory came. And this one that bought me all those things was also in that service. And he also gave big in that thing. And after that short span of a few days, him coming to see me in the other city, me being invited to speak in their country, in their capital city, just that short period of time, then this opportunity comes to him, a distress sale of an equestrian property with horses next to where the royal family lives, big property, big house, beautiful place. And he said with his accent, uh, prophet, doctor, the economy is tight, you know, meaning he was, he was saying it in his accent, it was his way of saying his pocket, his account, his pockets in his account. And he said, should I push myself to do this? I really want to hear from the Lord. I said, I'm not going to answer you now. Let me take a minute. Let me take a little time to pray and I'll just wait. When God speaks to me, I'll call you. I'll call you back. And it wasn't a few minutes after I hung up the phone. God didn't wait till the next day or the next hour even. He shouted aloud, tell him to do it. Called him back and I said, the Lord spoke to me loud. He says, ah, and the power of God hit him on the, on the phone. He says, he, he's like, he's shaking. You know, he's like, I'm shaking. He said, what is that? I'm shaking. He said, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm going to work on it. I'll let you know. Sure enough, he, he manages to buy the property. I, I didn't know what the property was. It was a huge thing. He said the property cost $3.6 million dollars. $3.6 million USD, three and a half million dollars. Then he tells me later, he's closed the deal, closed the sale, owns the property, bought it, done, happy, riding his horses with his daughter. His daughter loves horses, and they're riding, galloping around their property on their horses, enjoying the house. And then, Several months later, he calls me again. He said, I just was feeling like uh, the Lord woke me up early. I felt like I should find out how much this property is worth now if I wanted to sell it. I just got curious to do that. It's about 10 months after he closed the sale, after he first called me, <clears throat> within a year. And he said he got several appraisals by professional appraisers and also the comps, comparatives of the real estate market, what would that property sell for? And he's, he told me to our, my, our utter amazement, he said they've all said around the same figure, $7.2 million it could sell today for. That's exactly double. That's exactly double within a year of what he paid for it. Was that a good deal? How would you like to be so honorable to the anointing and so even in a, in a segment of time, and God give you a three and a half million dollar harvest profit. <clears throat> Some of you sitting there like, look like Igor from the movie. Uh, don't do that. You better get your hands up. Don't, don't sit there like this, like you're an extra in the horror movie. 
Like you, you're going to make the remake of the zombie apocalypse and you're one of the extras and you got to walk like this, you know. Don't do that right now. Stretch yourself. So somebody thought, if I fast and pray for 21 days, will I get that miracle? No! <laughs> if I go to church for a year and serve on the usher board and do all the committee meetings and take care of the children, cook chicken or whatever you cook, mandazis and tea and whatever, no, 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 no. You're not going to no get no $3 million harvest. Because you didn't do anything in the order of that law. Every law has a way of operation. When you work it, it works for you. Have you learned something here this evening? Yes. It works for you if you work it. If you don't work it, it don't work for you. And don't ever hesitate about tithing and sowing and first fruiting and uh, taking care of the poor and, and, and giving out of yourself. You need to be aggressively doing that because God is right there. He's got the accountants, the angels, taking the, the notes and saying, okay, give this harvest. And favor flows also, the favor of God. 95% of your prosperity comes by favor. Favor with people, favor with situations, favor with people that just like you, situations that are favorable to you, that happen for you in, in the realm of blessing you. And you know, the Lord arranged all that. He gave you his favor. And one day of favor can produce what years of labor and work couldn't do. I have one man of God says somebody came because of God's favor. Somebody took a liking to him. And he came and brought him an offering. And he tried to calculate how many events and meetings he'd have to do to receive that amount of money. He said it would take him two years to work for that money. To work. Endlessly traveling. Two years. And in five minutes, a man came and brought him a check. And he just received it right there. Two years worth of work. Lift your hands. You think that can't happen? It can happen for you like it happened for him. Yes. But you but you got to begin to do what he's done. When you want something you've never had, you got to do something you've never done before. Yes. And this is where people miss it. They want to do the same ritual, the same thing, go to the same place, Maybe the same church. I've been on that. I've been hitting on that. The Lord's talking about that. He wants to disconnect some people and get them freed up to where the pipeline of, of, the, of the anointing is really flowing so they can get blessed because they're not getting blessed where they are. A lot of people are in places they're not getting blessed at all. Their businesses, come on now, you know what I'm talking about. This is down home. You, you know, you know, you know. Look at your neighbor and say, you know. Say, we know. I know. Eco, uko, Nico. You know. Struggling, not blessed, not flourishing. That's not the will of God. You're in the wrong place. You're, and, and some p things are hard to get out of because of all the witchcraft and the manipulation that's been going on. Keeping you stuck. Lift your hands and say, I'm coming unstuck. I'm getting liberated in Jesus' name. I'm going to work the laws of God and they're going to work for me. And say this, thank God, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say thank you, Lord. For your anointing. And you're anointed. In Jesus' mighty name. All right, the M-Pesa, the PayPal, the website, the ways, the portals to sow will all be on the screen. You take action now, what I'm saying. And I'm going to be praying for you to get to see you have the most magnanimous harvest. It's going to happen. It's going to happen for you as you take action in this in Jesus' name. Love you much. I'm Thomas Manton the fourth. I'm praying for you. Let's remember the words of our great, 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 great uh, uh, uncle in the prophetic Isaiah 48, 17. He said, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. Let's remember the words of the psalmist 66, verse 12. People have ridden over your heads for too long. Go like this. I'm coming out. I'm swimming out. People have been riding over your heads. But now the Lord's bringing you into the wealthy place. Amen. Treasures hidden, seen, 
unseen, known, unknown, expected, unexpected, even hidden treasures. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, they're coming forth Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. to the elect and to the righteous. The people, that are, 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 the people that are action people, the people that are doing and working the laws of God, you're going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. I look to hear from you. Take the corresponding action and watch what God's about to do. Sow your seed, connect, and, and, and uh, uh, believe God to paint your mind and your imagination with some new creative ideas that will even bring you into a realm of wealth creation. He's going to do it. The Lord loves you. He wants to bless you. He doesn't like to see you struggling and in lack. He wants you to live in abundance. Can you imagine a life where you didn't have to struggle anymore? Your bills are paid. You don't get stressed about where to get money to pay for things. You just have it. Lift your hands. I want to, I'm, I'm bringing a, a generation of people into that way of living. That's where we're going. You just have it. It's just there. You have it. You don't have to stress about that. You, you're busy being productive. You're working on your, your life and what, what God's doing in and through you. You don't have to think about, how am I going to get money for this? How about, and you're all stressed out. No, those days have to come to an end. It's by working the laws of God and connecting up with the anointing that's flowing right here in Jesus' name. Love you much. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Talk to you later. T-T-Y-L. Talk to you later. Love you. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. Amen.